Welcome to Colorado Inside Out Post Game, a special web exclusive production here on Channel 12. Let's get a quick take on the pro and anti fracking ads that Colorado voters are still seeing despite the lack of fracking related issues on the 2014 November ballot. Patty Cahoon from Westward, it seems that even though these issues are off the ballot, this is pointing to a much longer war that we're still going to be a part of. What do you think? Well, the, yeah, they're definitely off the ballot, but that is just the start of the fight because. As we remember, in part of the deal to pull them from the ballot, so the two that Polis was supporting, the two that the oil and gas groups were supporting, was the fact that there would be a task force set up that would study the issue. And the task force still hasn't been announced yet. You know, they're still shifting through names. They got a lot of applications. But they're going to, they also need to sway the public opinion because the task force will put forward some legislative remedies, maybe. Then they're going to have to get the lawmakers and the public on their side. So, they're going to continue to run these ads until they run out of money or they run out of airtime, which is going to happen very quickly because all the other political ads are going to take it over. But we have not heard the last of fracking, and everyone wants to get their viewpoint out. David Kopel from the Independence Institute and DU Law School. It seems that this might be a sign that, regardless of the different uh, task forces coming up with regulations and the legislature getting involved, and things like that, that it might just be a public opinion battle that these two sides are waging. What do you think? Yes, and, and even if you could imagine that the task force made everybody happy and it passed the legislature unanimously. The ads would still continue because there's a, a battle nationally on this issue and a battle for public opinion in, in Colorado, a swing leading state. Uh, Patty's observation they'll continue till they run out of money means it will never stop <laughs> because on, on the one hand you've got the anti-fracking people like Tom Steyer, uh, a, the, the multi-billionaire, one of the wealthiest people in, in, in the world putting money against it. And on the other hand, you have the oil and gas industry, which also has money to buy ads. And as long as Steyer's buying, then his side is buying on one side, the oil and gas is going to be buying on the other. So uh, TV and radio stations have a long and lucrative stream of revenue for many years. Wish they counted for money for public television stations, but that's an argument for another day. Uh, Penfield Tate, a uh, attorney from Greenberg Straw, uh, Greenberg Trawrig, I apologize, and a longtime state lawmaker. Can the legislature do anything to stop this, or is basically they're just part, playing a role in a much larger play here? Uh, the legislature doesn't even have a role yet. The, I mean, once this task force comes together, now what David has has established for us is since both sides are printing money, uh, at this point they ought to print enough money and spend it to get some definitive science that they can put in front of the population and say, this is what we know, This is these are the facts behind fracking make what you will of it, but this is what we know. Nobody's doing it. All of these ads are emotional pitches with primarily women running around with babies in their arms talking about how much they love fracking and oil and gas and how I came here from another country so I could be an engineer and work in oil and gas and save our fish and save everything. The emotional appeal is going to have to tamp down at some point and to really win the day, somebody's going to have to come up with a fact based argument that lays it on the table because the legislature is going to be reluctant to do anything from a policy point of view unless they can go back home and say I did it because this is the evidence we were given this is what swayed me going home and saying because I felt strongly or I, I felt bad for the babies is not going to do it. Natasha Gardner senior editor of 5280 magazine when will Colorado viewers see Rocky, Rocky's autos or anything from Frank Azar? It's going to be months. <laughs> No time soon, <laughs> unfortunately. I, my, my advice to, to viewers would be just to turn, turn your, your, pick up your remote and turn it to mute because there are beautiful images of Colorado in every single one of these ads. There's just gorgeous mountainscapes and, and lovely prairie shots and, and that's what maybe they can, can avoid some of the, the mess. I think, you know, Penn's, Penn, Penn's point of, we're still waiting for a straight answer. We're still waiting for a simple answer. So you might sway people a little little bit in the, the general mood, you know, it feels like a mood ring type of situa <laughs> situation, you know, are, are you positive about this or not? But the ultimate answer is, the ultimate question is, is it safe? 
Is it safe for my family? And that's what people want to know. And until there is a succinct answer to that, these ads are going to continue. This PR campaign is going to continue. And people are continuing to put you know, the TV on mute because they just don't want to hear it. <laughs> that's all the time we have for Colorado Inside Out post game this week. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. For everyone here at CPT12.org, I'm Dominic Dizzuti. Thanks for watching.